calculated or what's this? Okay, those are index pulses coming from this floppy drive that I am interfacing with. I just got, you know, the first kind of parts going where I enable the motor and I'm setting the direction. I'm gonna, you know, get the index pulses and then I'm going to find out when it's at track zero. Um, so basically kind of trying to read data off of this floppy drive so I can add native floppy disk support to CircuitPython. Um, soon I'll uh, update this to maybe use the RP2040 as well. Um, right now I'm just writing the code in Arduino because that's what I'm familiar with. So I finally got all the IDC pins set up the way I needed to. What was really helpful was this um, really, really nice modern data sheet from Samsung for the SFD321B. Uh, so it actually goes through everything you need. Um, and uh, so far so good. So I've just started basically getting the motor running. The floppy disk is responding. So far, so good. Hi! Uh, I want to copy that floppy. That's right. Uh, here I've got some more stuff going on with my floppy disk controller that we're going to add to CircuitPython. So yellow traces you can see uh, is the index pulse that goes low. And then you see this like moving blue line. That's actually data coming out of the floppy drive. If I click the single button, you can see the data comes out and it comes out as these pulses that are like, you know, they're they're supposed to kind of be like a PWM, but they're actually just very low, low pulses. And then there's a pull up to pull it up high. And you can see that the um, data comes in, you know, in, in various widths. And um, so that's actually the tough part of reading a floppy is this is about 500 kilohertz. And the pulse width varies encoding the data. So over here, I'm actually doing something a little naughty. I'm not using a PLL. I'm actually just very, very quickly uh, in a no interrupt loop, um, reading those pulses and printing out the pulse widths. And I'm gonna see if that's good enough to read data from a floppy drive. Okay, nice Nordic shirt. Hey data, what are we doing? Okay, so uh, part three of my floppy project is I've got the data coming out of the read pin. And this is um, a GPIO pin I'm toggling up and down to show that I'm properly reading the pulse widths. Uh, for the data that's coming out in MFM format. And then what I've done over here is um, you can see I'm capturing flux transition and I've got a Cortex M4 here with like 256K of RAM. And so it's actually totally fine for me to just buffer the entire track of flux transitions because there's only 100,000 uh, transitions maximum per track. Um, and you can see that there's a little bit of binning here. So there's a couple of pulses, you know, a lot of pulses around 40. And then down here, we've got pulses around 60. And then finally, we've got pulses around 80. We've got a couple extra long ones, which is a little bit weird. Like, why is it 228? So a little bit more to analyze here. But I'm starting to get data coming in, and the data looks right. Hey, data, what is this? OK, so we're doing some floppy drive hacking. And I've got this like original 3 and a half inch floppy drive. But these are actually hard to get, because they're not made anymore. So I was wondering, you know, there's these off-the-shelf USB floppy disks. And you know, can I somehow use those? So I opened one up. I cracked it open. And it actually has a SFD321S Samsung 3 and a half inch floppy drive with a little adapter here. And the adapter's got a little cheap chip on the back. And there's all these points here and I'm hoping, can I get flux transitions out of here because I don't want it to do the translation for me. I want to get that raw data. Well, good news. Um, I found a really nice person online who actually did the uh, pinouts. And then when I access the disk, you can see on the scope, I get my index and flux transitions. So, you know, normally if you use these USB to floppy drive converters, you don't you know, they, they give you like a, a, a USB mass storage, but this way it can get that archival quality flux transition data out. Hey, what is this? Okay, I still got my Panasonic floppy disk drive and my Feather that I'm interfacing with. And I've gotten flux data out, and now I want to get that flux data from the disk drive and the Feather into the computer. So I'm using this open source tool called Grease Weasel, and I'm updating it to support... Um, this setup that I've got here. So basically I'm reporting the Grease Weasel firmware into Arduino. So far so good. There's some like flux op code thing that I gotta figure out. Like I've got the flux data leaving here. Um, you can see it's got the flux data sent and then over here it says, okay, it got the flux data, but then I have to like somehow encode the index. So I'm getting there, I'm close to getting raw data dumps onto my computer using totally open source hardware and software. Okay, happy new year. Happy new year. Boom. Hey, what is this? This is the first floppy disk I'm gonna try reading with my Grease Weasel compatible firmware on this Feather M4 hooked up to this floppy disk. 
Um, so I've got flux data and track seeking working, and I'm able to get some tracks working, like some tracks are reading just fine. I'm also getting some tracks where it's like, it doesn't see any sector data. And I think that's probably because like the flux data format I'm sending or the index, whatever um, opcode I'm sending isn't quite right. But for those first few sectors that I do get working, um, the data is good. So I'm just gonna have to figure out what it is that I'm doing that's slightly wrong. Um, but I feel like I'm getting closer, at least I'm seeking and I'm getting some data uh, working from the beginning of the disk track. What is this? Okay, I think I figured out all my power supply issues and my flux timing issues, and I'm reading, ready to read the secret disk that I got that they hid in that place that one time. Right. Thank you, Acid Burn. So I'm gonna put this in my floppy drive, and then over here on Grease Weasel, I'm going to start capturing track data. So I'm gonna capture all the MFM IBM PC sector tracks, all 80 times two headers. So 160 total tracks. Okay, so we have read all of the sectors 100%. So it's ready to uh, open up win image. We're gonna open up that secret image. Oh my God, it's gonna open, but I'm gonna open it anyways. Oh, no. Yeah, let's just open it. Oh no! Not mm. again. Yeah. I just got Rick on my own floppy disk reader. Yeah, did. What is this? Okay, so we've still got our floppy setup going on here where we're capturing flux traces from a three and a half inch floppy drive. But I've replaced the Feather M4 SAMD51 with this pink feather, not just because pink is a cool color, but because this feather has an RP2040 on it which is a low cost chip from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And this chip can run really fast. It also has this cool PIO uh, peripheral. So we're overclocking it to 200 megahertz, but why not? We're getting good uh, flux captures over here. And uh, when we recompiled it and we're running a grease weasel, it's just working. So this is cool because now I've got two different platforms that work with this Arduino library, which is the goal to make it hardware agnostic so more people can um, wire up hardware and build hardware to work with floppy disk drives. And then next up, maybe we'll try this little fellow, the Raspberry Pi Pico, $4 microcontroller board. What is this? Okay, I'm wrapping up for the night. It's getting a little late. Time to maybe do some yoga and chill out. <laughs> um, so I've got um, the final board I'm gonna interface with. This is the Raspberry Pi Pico. So this is a $4 microcontroller. Um, and the reason I'm targeting this is it's available, like Digikey has 17,000 of them in stock, and some of the hardware that people are using for open source floppy interfacing isn't available because we're in a silicon shortage, but this chip is available. So it's nice is that the pinouts like kind of line up very nicely. You can um, connect them straight through to your floppy disk drive, um, and then load the um, Arduino code onto it, and I set up the pinouts all nicely. and. Um, tested it, I uh, read a whole floppy just fine, and then I've submitted this to the um, Arduino library registry so you'll be able to get releases, and maybe I'll even have it auto-generate UF2 files. So I think I'm done for tonight. Maybe time to celebrate. Good with, uh, work. Glass of water. Yeah. <laughs>